uh, there is nothing better in life than a good marriage. If you and uh, if you understand your spouse and she understands you, and uh, there is perfect harmony, and nothing feels better than that. And when we talk about marriage, one thing we need to also understand is that Satan works actively against marriage. To say Satan works against prayer first, against prayer, and second is marriage. Why? Anything that God has said, Satan will. It's very, very important for us to lay that foundation. God said, Jesus said, pray, lest you fall into temptation. But I would say pray without sin. Satan has attacked prayer. That if many people don't want to pray or don't lead uh, a life of uh, a, a life of prayer, or don't have a spirit of prayer, and they don't live prayer life, that is a purpose, people who pray. And also, second, marriage. <laughs> marriage is beautiful and is the only institution ordained by God. And when God sits in heaven. He doesn't see Captain Hill or he doesn't see Harvard. All he sees is husband and wife because he knows that if there is peace in marriage, there will be peace in family. If there is peace in the family, there will be peace in the country, peace in the country, there will be peace in the whole world. It starts with the marriage unit. That's why the Bible says, train a child the way he should go. And when they grow, they will not depart. It can only be done with a father head. So we're going to look at marriage in general, what it entails and how to make marriage function better, the give and take aspect of marriage. First of all, we, we have some Bible texts that I want us to read about marriage. First, I love this one when God created heaven and earth in Genesis 2.18. I want us to go there quickly. We're going to be reading a lot of uh, verses, Genesis 2.18. First, when God created, created all the first thing he said, he said, God said, I see that it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make the companion he needs, one just right for him. The, this is the today's English version. Let me go into the New King James one and see what it says there. And the Lord said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. That means God, so they call woman, out of man came the woman. So God said that it is not good for the man to be alone. So right from the beginning, God decided that for, for his creation to thrive, a man will need a woman. And in Genesis 2, he also commanded them. He said, increase and be fruitful. God, God is a God of increase. And so he told them, he said, increase. Yes, then this 128. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. You know that we cannot multiply if there is only one man. So he said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish, over the bears, and everything. Now, we are going to read our marriage text first. Pre, uh, Proverbs 18.22. I want to read that to you. It's all about Proverbs uh, uh, King Solomon. You know, he's very good. When you, when you want to look at marriage, you have to consult him because he married over 700 wives. So he knows everything about marriage. You see, he said here, he said Proverbs 18.22. I want to read that quickly to you too. He said, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and listen to this and obtains favor from the Lord. So the one who finds a, a wife finds a good thing and that man will obtain favor from God because it is the will of God that men should marry when, they are, when their time is up. And then we'll go to Colossians, Colossians 3, 18 and 19. Colossians chapter 3, 18 and 19. I want he said, wives, submit to your own husband. Here, he's talking about wife respecting your husband. He said, wives, submit to your own husband 
as is fitting in the Lord. And then he commanded the husband, husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter toward them. In other words, for a successful marriage, the man must always forgive. When it comes to love, you don't count the cost. You don't count the headaches. You don't count the sacrifice. Because the person who hurts you is the one who is very close to you. It's not somebody who is outside. The one who your wife is the one who can hurt you. Your husband is the one that can, who can also hurt you. And so I submit to you here, especially young couple, young, uh, I've been married for about 20 years since my first divorce. So I know a lot about marriage and I know a lot about women. But if you don't hold your wife's hand to pray at night, or if you don't, you, uh, your mind will encounter some challenges. Always hold your wife's hand before you go to bed, just before retiring. And as you tell God the problems you're having with your wife, your wife will also be telling God the problem he's having with you. So everybody will be listening. And you present that prayer to God. That Lord, I want you to help my husband love me more, respect me more, and be and be submissive and understand me more. And say, husband, I, Lord, I want my wife to you know surrender to me anytime, or to love me, and also not to complain a lot about my faults and things. So you pray to God, and as you do that, the Lord will bind you together with course of love that can never, ever be broken. And Proverbs 31, let's read Proverbs 31, 31, 10 to 13. It's, it's, it's very long here. Proverbs 31. It, uh, the one I'm looking for, is say, a virtuous, a virtuous woman who can find. It's the test I'm, I like. Say, thank you. But I don't, uh, yes, pro, Proverbs proverb 31, 10 to 21. But I... I want to just, I'm looking, the only thing I'm looking for, is a special thing. He said, who can find a virtuous wife? For her wealth is far above rubies. I want to, let's go to the, uh, he said, how hard it is to find the perfect wife. She is worth far more than jewels. Her husband depends on her. He will never be poor. She does good for her husband all her life. She never causes him trouble. She's always gathering wool and flowers. She enjoys making things with her hands. She's like a sheep from a faraway place. She brings home food from everywhere. She wakes up early in the morning, cooks food for her family, and gives the servant their share. She looks at land and buys it. She uses the money she has earned and plants a vineyard. She works very hard. She is strong and able to do all her work. She works late into the night to make sure her business and her profit. You see, this is about the, uh, the Solomon talking about qualities of a good wife. Now we, we're going to go to uh, 1 Corinthians 7, uh, 15. It's very, very important here where Paul talking about denying some women, they use sex as an uh, instrument to deny their husbands. And Paul, and, and Paul said, it's very, very, very bad. If you do that, it shall not be well with you. He say, but, but if the husband wife who's, okay, and the wife who is not a believer is, here he's talking about husband, the marriage, the marriage, like if you marry a, a, a woman who is not a believer, Apostle Paul said, you should not leave her. Yes, you should not leave her. So, and then said, do not deny your bodies to your hus husbands. A, your body does not actually belong to you, a woman, your body belongs to your husband. And husband to your body belongs to your wife. So anytime she wants it, unless you are having a, a, a what do you call, fasting, or you, you're sick, you have to satisfy your wife every time she wants to hear Paul talking about that. It's very important. It's also a test that we need to know. Yes, because it plays a big role. And for men to also understand that women needs are different, especially to satisfy a woman is very different from that of a man. So the most important here I want to read to you also is Proverbs 5, 5, 15, 21. Proverbs 5. And I think I've read a lot to you. Proverbs 5. Proverbs chapter 5. Let me look at it.
Proverbs 15 to 21. I want to read it. I know everyone on this platform is old enough. He said now about sex and marriage, drink only the water that comes from your own well mm -hmm. and don't let your water flow out into the street. This is Solomon warning husbands that you have to do what? Sleep with only your wife. Don't go out cheating on her. Say, so keep it for yourself and don't share it with strangers. Be happy with your own wife. Enjoy the woman you married while you were young. She is like a beautiful dear, a lovely form. Let her love satisfy you completely. Stay drunk on her love and don't go stumbling into the arms of another woman. This is today's English version. So I think it's very clear. You all get it very, uh, yes, it, uh, it, it's more, I like the King James version, but this English is today's English. So you can understand it better and very clear. You heard it. He said the most important aspect of marriage is being faithful to your wife, providing for her needs, and also being able to satisfy her in bed. Yes, as you age, you get weak and you're no longer to, you're not able to satisfy like you used to. But Solomon says it's part of the package. So I think now I've read a lot of Bible verses to you talking about marriage, that God has ordained marriage. It is his will that man and woman will live together. Any sex outside marriage is a sin. And one, this is a controversial statement that I'm going to make. And during the questions, if anyone has issues about that, they can ask questions on that. Sex is for procreation. Sex is not for recreation. Sex is for procreation. What is the meaning of procreation? Procreation is continu continu continuing the species. Setting a single door. And it's not for recreation. In other words, God didn't create sex for fun. That's something that you do and enjoy. He created it and made he created it and made it pleasurable so that we do it for us to increase and multiply. Because God knows that if sex was so were to be so painful that a woman will cry during sex, they will never, never do it. And humans, we will never increase. And that's why he makes it pleasurable. But it's only for procreation when you want to have babies. That is why as you age into your 50s and 60s, you, 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 are, you are very weak because God does not intend for you at that time to be actively engaged in sexual activity. So if your husband is young and he wants it, you have to give it to him as many as would God. A time will come, he will grow old and you'll be scratching his back and you are not going to get it the way you used to get it. It's very, very important for us and say, drunk on her love and be faithful to your wife. Now, we're going to look at how to make your marriage try. Because, uh, and then after that, we will ask question. The purpose of marriage, we said in Genesis 1.20, is procreation. God created marriage that we will increase and multiply. He created marriage that a man will help his wife, his wife will will also help him and the two will live together. That's why Jesus said in Mark that a man will leave his uh, family and be joined to his wife and what the Lord has put together. That is Mark chapter, Mark chapter 10, 6 to 8, let no man put a sender. So it was never in, in God's mind that we should divorce. But like I said, everything God has said, Satan will work against it. And that's why we have divorced. Even Christians are divorcing. Recently, you heard that Bill Gates and his wife, they are filing for divorce. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. the Bill Gates and his wife. Jeff Bezos, the, the richest man with his wife. So you, are, so you know that it's not, it's not money that can make a woman happy. If, if it's only money, why would Jeff Bezos leave his wife and pay her and pay her 30? He paid, he paid his wife 39 billion, 39,000 million dollars. It's more than the entire money that Ghana, the whole Ghana got, doesn't even have one tenth of that money. He paid his wife that money. How can you give your that much money to let her go? 
Yes, I understand, but this much money, I'm not saying that the money is too much because when he, when he married his wife, he didn't have anything. So if you now have 170 and you're giving 39 to your wife, hey, I, I, I don't have any problems with it. But I wonder that people think that when they get money, money, they will have a beautiful uh, marriage. No, woman needs, woman don't need money. Of course, money is good for them. They need money, but money alone cannot satisfy woman. You need to have time with her. You need to encourage her. You need to adore her. You need to satisfy her. And, and you need to prove to her that you truly, truly love her. Those things are more important. Respect her. Yes, a woman must respect her husband at every cost. And a man must show love on, at every point that he truly loves. He, he truly loves his wife. But I just said, say this to say that if rich, the richest men, two richest men in the world, number one richest and the second, they are all divorcing their wife. Then you know that money, money cannot truly, truly bring happiness in marriage. Of course, you need a little bit to provide for your family. So the purpose of marriage, we said, is what? Procreation. That is God's idea is for us to multiply and increase and fill the earth. That's why he created husband and wife. Yes. And second, his goal is to have what? Godly children. Genesis 20, uh, Proverbs 22 says, uh, teach a child the way he should go. And when he grows, he will not depart from it. So God's idea is that if you train your child, like I said, when your children are young, like three, four, five, put your hand on their head and pray for them and anoint their head with oil and speak good things into your life. Don't just do it once, every day. You, you'll be a prophet. You, you'll be a doctor. You, you'll be a holy man. You, you'll be a great man. You'll be honorable. Salvation will be your portion. Every day proclaiming it over your children. And as you decree, it shall manifest because by your words, you shall be justified. By your own words, you shall be condemned. Obama, President Obama, when he was even three, four years, his mother started reading to him. He couldn't comprehend, he couldn't understand anything. But they were reading to him. If your child, if your if your son or daughter is only three, four, you put mathematics across before he put it there. He doesn't see it. He doesn't know anything. But as he looks at those mass figures, it will be ingrained in his mind. Because when they are young, their brains are like mesh. They can speak any language. A child who is two, three years, you take him to any country, he will learn that language just like that. But you are not all. <laughs> you go there, you can never. But a child, if he's three, four years, you take him to any country. Before you know, six you start speaking the language. Their brains are like mush. And so whatever you want that child to be, you put praise in front of him. If you show him computers, if you show him the Bible, if you show him, we will grow to be a scholar of that. It's a revelation. Those of you, if you are having children, do that. And you will thank me for that. And so we know that the purpose, the goal God has in mind for marriage is what? To create godly children. Children who will love the Lord. Children who will live holy. Children who will do the will of God and not live a life of sin and go into the world and, and do bad things. Unfortunately, many parents don't talk to their children. They, they, when they were children are six, seven, that's when you start talking to them about sex. You don't wait till they are 12 and 14. Then he goes to school and somebody will kiss her and somebody will rob her. It's already finished. If you don't take care, that child will grow up. Now she won't respect anything. By 15, 16, she starts sleeping around. You, you, you indoctrinate them when they are seven, eight. Why? At that time, they, for many years, they don't have the brains of their own. But once they get to 10 and 12, they start thinking for themselves. And they say, you can't tell me what to do. It's very, very important. By six, seven, you tell them about the dangers of sex and what sex can do to them the spiritual implication and also the physical implication and how it will limit and affect their lives and tell your children six, seven, don't be afraid that they are too young. You see, sex can only husband, or only your husband you should sleep with. And that time when they six, seven, it stops. Don't just say once, every day you keep telling them until they are eight or nine, ten, it is stuck in their head. They will never, and the Lord will bless them for that. It's very important. All these things need to be taught 
to our children. But our parents didn't teach us. God told us that life. He said, teach this to your children. Teach it to them. So they will also teach their children, children. And they will all have the mind of Christ. Unfortunately, they didn't do that. The Israelites just have children and they went their own way. And so when they grow up, they follow Baal, they do bad things. A lot of prostitutes and their mothers didn't talk to them when they were young. If at six, seven, they sat them down and start speaking to them, the dangers of sex, the dangers of uh, living unholy lives and living in sin, that sin will cost you. We'll, all of us will never have sin. Or we'll be very careful. But sit down and ensure that parents don't, uh, don't sit down and, and tell their children these things. And when the children grow up, they become very bad and worldly. Because if you don't talk to them, somebody outside will talk to them. Their friends, they will follow their friends. If you don't know where you are going, any road will take you there. But when your child is six and you lay your hands on a palm, pour oil and pray for her, talk about the dangers of sin, dangers of living wrong, dangers of uh, sex and all those things, you think that she's only six. By the time she's 12, her mind is steady. We have uh, one of our friends here, her daughter, she came to live with us. We will always take her to church, pray for her. Now she's 26, doing her master's, never had sex. She's a virgin because of the way we train her. Me, myself, I was all over the place when I was young, sleeping with different, different women, doing bad things, watching Bono and all those nasty things. Nobody told me anything. But when I grew up, I said, no, our parents should have taught us. If it's a new power to tell me, until you are you train children. You don't just feed them and let them go to sleep and shout when they do something bad. You teach them and train them. That's why we say train a child. Speak to them about the dangers of sex, about the dangers of living in sin, dangers of not respect, uh, res uh, respecting parents, dangers of doing their own thing. Because your child may be smarter than you, intelligent, that one thing they are not is they don't have more experience. They have never seen life and the difficulties that goes with it. They don't know that. So if you if your if your if your children are bad and they go, it's because you didn't pray enough for them. You didn't anoint their head enough of oil, and you did not teach them when they are six, seven. By four, you start speaking to them about maths, English, whatever they want them to be. And by six, seven, you start training them. At that time, they are bringing really too young. They don't know left from right. And that's how you indoctrinate them. Because once they get to 10, 12 and have their own brains, everything you, you tell them will go out the window because they won't listen. Because now they have their own mindset. It's very, very important. Young people on this prayer, or young couple on this line, you take that to heart, you will grow to be great children. Don't take it easily and say, oh, I am a man of God, so my children will also be a prophet. Oh, no. If you don't anoint them and keep praying and, and interceding on their behalf for God, Satan will find a way to hinder them. Yes, I know many, many pastors, they are children, they're living with their wives, their children. One pastor here, he, his son, in one year, he impregnated four, four women. A pastor's son who is only 23. Mm. In, in one year, he has impregnated four women. <laughs> he's yes, he's 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 busier than his own father. And why is that? He didn't, he said, oh, I'm I'm the pastor, he, all is well. No, the father, your pastor hasn't been anything. God didn't just say go and uh, and, and and proclaim David King. He said, anoint him, speak my word upon him, even God Himself. He says, son, anoint the man, pour oil as a sign between him and his God, the God that I serve. And let that I dedicate and rededicate him to the Lord. Let the Lord direct and order the affairs of his life. And the Lord will take control. Don't just say, so oh, I'm a pastor, all is well. And then just pray for my son. And oh, no, no, no. And the night we just pray, anoint them and speak into their lives. If not, Satan will catch them and use them. So, for at length, and then what are the benefits of marriage? The reason God, you see, we have the purpose of marriage. We're going to ask questions each on this uh, first. The purpose, we're going to ask uh, uh, the goal of marriage, 
and then what are the benefits? So we know what are the benefits given the test that I read to you about marriage. We know that Solomon, the wise man said in Ecclesiastes 4, we say two strands are not easily broken. If you read Ecclesiastes 4, uh, let's go there. Ecclesiastes 4, 8 to 12. I want to read it very, very quickly to you. You can open or you can just listen. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. We start from 9 to 12. Two people are better than one. Solomon is saying here. I'm reading from today's English verse. He said two people are better than one. When two people work together, they get more work done. If one person falls, the other person can reach out to help. But those who are alone, when they fall, have no one to help them. If two people sleep together, they will be warm. But a person sleeping alone will not be warm. An enemy might be able to defeat one person, but two people can stand back to back to defend each other. Amen. Amen. So, so a husband and wife who have team up together, no power can hinder them. No. So Satan will find a way to get into that marriage to sow discord and create, and create resentful, a resentment. So people will be resentful. They, they resent, my husband did this, I am angry, my husband didn't uh, say happy birthday to me on my birthday. Those are nothing. I remember I, I forgot my, my wife's birthday. Hey, fireworks. <laughs> you know, but, but those are not, the, the, the most important thing is you have the man, the man is faithful to you, the man will not go anywhere and, and do those things. Those are more, much more important than a guy who will remember your birthday, buy gifts for you, do all those things, and still go behind you and sleep with another woman. You see, who would you what do you prefer? You know, so I'm, I mean, and and I say God is great. One day she forgot mine too. You see, but I say, you see, it can happen to when when you forget a man's birthday, it, it's peace and quiet in the house. He won't complain. But if you forget a woman's own, it's fireworks. Amen. And he, so you didn't even say in my birthday, you didn't give me even any card. Oh <laughs> <laughs> you didn't you don't take me out. Once in a while, take me out so we can go dine outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Since I marry you, we have never been on vacation. This, a man can take you to vacation, do all this for you, go behind you and still cheat on you. What do you prefer? So I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that those are not important. They're important, but if the husband doesn't do that, look at the whole package. You have your money is good in, in many areas. So overlook, always, con always concentrate on his strength not on his weakness. And if there's something in his life that you don't like, take it to the Lord in prayer. Because God, God's eyes are on marriage. And, and so if you, if you go to God, say, Father, change my husband in this area. Like I told you, the place where I used to work, we have these gambling people, they will come and gambling. One man said, I gamble 5,000. Now he said, so I gamble 10,000, I lost. He said, if I have listened to my wife, I wouldn't have lost 10,000. Mm -hmm. I said, if you gamble, anyone who gamble, you are a loser. Because the white man did not put that machine there for you to succeed, uh, to, 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 to come and, and, and win money so he will lose. Why am I saying that? He didn't listen to his wife. Sometimes you have to listen to your wife. Sometimes the woman must also listen to the husband. It's very important. Sometimes after some years, the woman don't listen. You tell them something, they won't listen. All these things are challenges. Hold your wife's hand and take every problem to the Lord in prayer. Never tell people your marriage issues. Never. No. It's only God who can solve the challenges. Unless maybe a pastor, you said, I have this issue with my pastor. Let, let Pray for me. But other than that, don't tell your friends. 
your money troubles. Don't tell, no. Maybe what he's going through is worse than yours. Mm -hmm. But he has kept quiet. When we're at the airport, we have this guy always complaining about his wife. Always. And I said, I say, look at all these guys here. Everyone married. Nobody talks about his wife. You are the only person. My wife is lazy. My wife is this. I say, why would you come and wash your dirty linen clothes outside? You, you, you belittle your wife and put your wife there. Then at night, you go and sleep with her. What kind of man are you? Protect your wife and defend your wife. Say something nice about her. If you cannot, be quiet. You're not the only one who has a bad marriage. Many, many people have issues in marriage. Don't, don't, don't think that, don't think that you, your marriage is bad or your marriage is bad. If, if whatever you're going through, I don't know what you're going through, but someone, someone own is far worse. And yet they are staying together. So please, it, 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 even in your own life, you make mistakes and there are challenges. So if you're living with someone, don't you think everything will be, will be perfect? No, it will not. There will be challenges. Yes. So if your wife mm -hmm. challenges or troubles you, don't take it to heart. Take it to the Lord in prayer. This woman will always challenge. And women like to talk a lot. You know that, right? They talk a lot. That's, the, that's mm -hmm. their nature. And the women are more emotional than men. Men are not emotional, but women are. And so we are saying all these things to couples so that you can understand. And when it comes to sex too, you, a woman takes, body takes a lot to warm up. So it will take like 30 minutes, one hour before you even do something. If you just jump on her and boom, 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 two minutes, you finish. You, you have done nothing because she's not satisfied. Next time you approach her, she will say, no, I am tired. I will give it to you. But if you know how to treat her body, she herself will, will hold you and say, husband, come. I'm ready for you. It's very important. You may be powerful in bed, but if you just jump on her, no matter what, you, you will come down and she has she won't feel anything. Take your time, slow hands, and caress your woman and tell her how sweet she is. And she will love you for that. It's very important. Use your hand because God, you God, God hates our sex. You know, our sex, God says we, we shouldn't do. But that's what, that's what pleases the woman most. But like I said, sex is not, it's not there for pleasure, it's there for procreation. So use your hand in your own subtle way and bring pleasure to your wife. And if you do that, she will not deny you. Every time she'll give it to you. And also money issue, discuss money issues with her and see how you can plan money because money issues can be problem in marriage. Money issues. The woman, when a man makes money, he spends. But when the women alone are spending their money, they think something is wrong. You hear what the Ghana uh, Ministry of Information says? That when I make money, it's mine. But if my husband makes money, it's for both of us. It's nonsense. Why is this stated in the Bible? That when you are married, if a woman makes a lot of money, that money belongs to her alone. But if her husband makes money, it belongs to both of them. Can you imagine? This is the mindset of marriage. In, in Africa and especially in Ghana, you see why divorces are all over the place. If I make money, so this means that if the husband falls on hard time or money is not coming, she's not going to use her money to, to support her husband. But if she were to fall on hard time, her husband will use and his money to support her. It's wrong mindset. You have to support your wife. Your wife must support your husband. Yes. Whatever comes, one has to stand in the gap and help and help each or one another. And so I think I've said enough. Uh, we're gonna ask some questions for time's sake so that we can have time to pray for some few distant, it will be wonderful. Now, I think, yes. So we've talked about the purpose that is for profession. The goal is to create godly children, children who grow in the admonition and fear of God, to love God and to obey him and to do right and to live responsible life as society members. That is the goal of marriage and for and, and the benefit is what? You support your wife, your wife supports you. You live together as one. Two, two strands are not easily broken. 
is very difficult. Your human hair, if you take three, you cannot break them. But if you take one, you can break it easily. Have you observed that? If it is, when you take only three, it's not easy to break. <laughs> but only one, you just, you just even thread, take three thread and suddenly it's difficult to, 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 to break them. But just one thread, you tear it apart easily. And so a husband must love, a husband must respect, uh, must love his wife. And a wife must respect <clears throat> And not talk to him anyhow, and not deny, mm. and not deny her husband, her body, because I'm angry. You didn't do this for me. Don't touch me. It's wrong. Don't ever do that. If you do that, your heavens will be closed, and God will not mm. answer you. It's very, very, very important. If you have issues, and if you have a, a specific way that you want your husband to do it for you in bed, then you tell her. Yeah, whether slow or fast, or you want has to, you want, want him to last long, you tell him there's a way we have to can do it and last long and please her. Whatever it is, we are discussing this because some people sex is a problem, some people money is a problem, some people communication is a problem, some people the husband don't spend time with them is a problem. Some people they feel the husband don't listen to them or don't treat them right is a problem. So everyone and the issue. Some people to the children they troublesome and they give headache. Yes. yes. So now we have discussed these issues are like very, very critical because it's very important in the of God that we give uh, a good one. Now I wrote I wrote things from five days very quickly in five minutes and we start asking questions. Now the things you should know about your mate is know the wounds of your mate. That is you know her fears. You know her challenges. You know what she likes and what she does not like. You know how she has been hurt. Some, 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 uh, some people have been hurt. Even their aunties, uh, their uh, uncles have abused them. Some have been raped when they are young. You know, so nature her or uh, concerning those issues. And know the fears of your mate is very important. Know her close friends, who, who she talks to. It's very, very important. Because if they give her advice, Sometimes they will listen more than even their own husbands. And also, know those who counsel your wife, the one who will be telling them do this and do that is very, very important. Pray about that and know the weakness of your mate, where she falls short and how weak she is. Some people, some women are weak. They can they have food. They cannot cook very well. They, 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 they cannot cook palatable uh, dinner or food. And they also enjoying some two are very lazy, you know. They just don't want to work hard. Some two are very, uh, very uh, proud people. Many people are women, right? We move from them, we come back from work, you know. But challenge you. If you want to, if you want to scar, or best spend, you will see Kenya. They will spend all your money. Every money they will spend. Some two, they don't. They, they, they you know, they, 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 they don't want any of your family. Come to them to is all about themselves. All they want is themselves. Anything, all they want, everything. Some are greedy, some are jealous, some are bitter for nothing, some are proud, some are lazy, some are selfish. All these things are issues in, in marriage and it needs to be addressed. So know where your husband, your wife or your husband falls short, and then deal with that or take that to the Lord in prayer. Yeah. And also. Um, I'm going to give you some keys very quickly. God places successful marriage. God recognizes recognize the value God places on your marriage. It's very important because marriage is an institution ordained by God. So whatever you do to your husband or wife, you are doing it to God. If you are denying her of your body, your heavens will be closed. You will go through financial issues and troubles. Don't do that. And if you don't respect your husband, God knows that you don't respect him. Almighty God Himself. Like I said, protect yourself from bad friends and know that Satan hates good marriage. So make sure that you hold your wife's hand and pray. If not, he will attack the marriage. He will use all kinds of stuff to attack it. And also build good influences in your home. Every day you hold your wife's hand and children and pray for them and do Bible study, even 20 minutes. And when you do that, they will learn 
to read the Bible themselves. Every time, aside from this platform, hold your children's hands and even for one minute, pray with them. Yeah. And also have activities and also ask them questions. What they are school, they are troubles, and ask your wife if there's any issue in the house, whatever, whatever troubles and whatever she's going through. Let discussion is very, very important. And you do that and then you solve that. And then you plan financial plan uh everything together. Because marry together, pray together, they will all they will most likely live together for long. So we are ending this message on marriage. And I'm gonna if anyone has other any question, five minutes they can bring it, then we'll start question answers. We will we'll want to wrap we'll be up. in the mic now. Uh, open your mic now and now open your mic we're gonna if anyone has questions they can ask based on what i have said so far if not i'm going to ask questions and then you are going to tell me what you know concerning the questions that i'm going to ask if something to say so far concerning marriage that he doesn't understand if somebody wants to ask questions about marriage. And Prophet now since this time will be on catch with you. Oh, that be me and me can bro for cake. Then I'm a can bro for daddy. Oh, okay. There, I thought there are some people, you said some people are on the line, huh? they cannot speak to you. Ah, yeah, I assume. Huh? Only your wife? I'm a little chrome for you being a bum. Oh, there are some there on the platform. There are some on the line now on this platform. Uh, can... uh, eh? Hello? Uh, so that so oh, there's also two now, right? Uh-huh. Okay. The only way you can speak in three, I can translate it. Ask me the question in three, and I will translate it if you if you want to do that. Okay. okay. Uh, 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 praise God. The other lady is uh, Nigeria. Uh, uh, you understand English, Sister Doris? Open your mic if you have any questions to ask. No, I understand, ma. Okay. You understand everything. Okay. Then yes, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Again. Uh, uh, praise God, uh, Daddy. I want to know the uh, the the. The case, uh, maybe you deny your husband for for something like uh, 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 you deny your husband for something, or your husband deny you for something. I want to know the case that is following it. No, you say if you Please. deny your husband, your prayers will be hindered. Okay. Your prayer, the case that will come is that your prayers will be God will not listen to your prayers, and if God is not listening to your prayer, that means your heavens will be closed. You cannot receive anything from him. Mm -hmm. okay. You see? Uh, so for mommy, can I, why you ask it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want, to, you want to know why I ask? Uh-huh. Uh, why? <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you. <laughs> no, I, I cannot be lying because we are in presence of God. That is the issue that me and I have. The issue that you have. Yes, I have that issue. <laughs> that, is why, that, is why, that is why I ask you. I'm uh, interested to ask about what is the the repercussion of uh, maybe you deny your husband for the, the, the question you are asking about that you deny your husband for what you don't know what you mean ah uh, why you why you are going to, uh, why you are going deep deep deep, deep, deep. asking question our daddy don't understand you're supposed to go deep so that nobody is baby here you go look, uh, what that what i mean is that maybe uh, uh, you, uh <laughs> maybe i deny my husband in bed it says Maybe I will say uh, I don't want uh, all those things. Uh, yeah. That is what I ask him. <laughs> yes, and uh, but and if you deny that, your then your prayers could be hindered. In other words, God will not listen to that prayer unless you have a genuine. He said the only time you can deny your husband is when you are fasting. Both of you agree. Okay. And hmm. what of uh, that? What of if you are if you are tired? <laughs> <laughs> if you are tired, you tell her that you are tired in the morning after you rest, then you give it to her. You give it to him. 
Yeah. Yeah. Our daddy answered my question for me. Yeah. When you're tired, you sleep. Morning, you give it to him. If your husband wants it three times a day, give it to him. It doesn't. Ah, feel no, that, that 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 one is too much now. Nah. It's not too much. Yeah. You have. Hey. Listen, you have. I'm not hey. saying you are prostitute, but you are prostitute who go and sleep with different men, ten different men uh. every night. So if you can sleep with 10 different men, hey, that and is not that. Every you sleep with your own husband three times, is that is that more than enough? Talk to me. <laughs> a person will go on the street, sleep with 20 different men, he does, she doesn't even know. Mm -hmm. And they do this like four or five times a week. And you have to sleep with your husband every day or every other day for just two rounds or three. What is big deal? Really? Hey, Jesus. Jesus. Uh, that, the, same, the same explanation that I'm giving to him every day. The same explanation. Uh, 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 Professor, you want us to bring ourselves? Uh, is it not your fault? Professor, you want me to go deeper? It's go deeper. Is it not your fault? Okay, Professor, wants me to talk. Is it for because uh, he, he still almost six years that he far from me? So it becoming used for me to, to, to stay like that. It's not my fault. I know that he's doing it, he doing he do that that uh, is not that he, 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 he praying and be doing fasting that he will not uh, come close to me six years. So it becoming used for me that uh, I uh, like, uh, mm. I don't know the way I will put it. So no. but mm. now he bringing he bring problem for the marriage. So no, the thing is, Whatever the issue, you take it to the Lord in prayer. If your husband abstain for even uh, say six months, and and you know it's for a wet, that, that a wet is not six months, so it's even more than six years that we did not sleep for the same bed, but we stay the same house. He sleep for me. He stay for he sleep for her. Me, I sleep for the bedroom. Ah. For six good years. Even more than if I calculate, even more than. Daddy, even in this year, since then, I have heard from the Tuana. The road is closed. I know the road is not closed. Immediately, immediately, you just finish one, it will go. It will get. Immediately, you finish one, it will just go. It will just go. So. Uh -huh. you, it's you that bring it now, so let us finish it. The thing is, the thing is, you have to, you know, issues like that, you say, oh, pastor, let's pray concerning these issues. Uh, don't, at that moment, don't say no, but you give your, give, give, give yourself to him anytime he wants, and then when you are in a happy mood, you say, husband, this is the issue I have with you. Let's sit down and talk. It's, it's better that way mm -hmm. than to mm -hmm. react and say, hey, because of this, I'm also doing this. No. <laughs> Always, when your husband comes, give it to him. If he sleeps somewhere in the, the uh, living room and you want him, go and tell him that I want you. Yes. It shouldn't be something that you should hide at all. Your husband... You have to tell him if you want it, you tell him he will give it to you. Yes. Even if fasting, unless you decide that I'm fasting, so I'm not going to do it for three days, then yes. But after that, no. You have to demand it. And your husband will do it. Because the Bible says the marriage, the marriage bed is never defiled. The marriage bed is never defiled. Okay. So... Now we are going to ask the questions. Uh, if anyone has, I have question, Doris. please, sir. Uh -huh, sister Doris, talk. Sir, uh -huh. please, sir. For example, all man and wife living together, the man always go out to fornicate. When the woman asks the man to do a blood test to know if he is not having sickness, because of that, the woman will be there to sleep with the man. Is God going to punish the woman for that? Uh, say that, say that. Uh, I didn't get it. 
Ah, do you have evidence that the man did the man tell you that he's cheating on you? You will see the man, it's not that they say they say you will even see the man with the wife, not one, not two, not three, different, different people. Then you will you have seen your husband will with different people to do with you. Except I see your test. Will God punish such such a woman? Okay, Ooh. okay. My question is so you say that your husband, your husband. Uh, you have seen your husband with different women. For example, I just asked as a question. Oh, oh, you, oh, you asking us a question. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, yes. okay. That's a very good question. If, uh, well, if you, if your husband himself has confessed that he has cheated on you, then you can, you have the right to say, let us do tests to see if you have something. Mm -hmm. But if he has not cheated on you, you cannot suspect him and assume that he cheated on you. So he should he should do a test. Because the thing is, he can go for the test and next day go behind your back and see for another woman again, which you may not know. You see? That's true. No, don't you know that's a possibility? And I'm on the other side. Yeah. He can he can he can go do the test and then. If it's a man who likes to sleep around, he will go and sleep around. We have a woman here, his husband sleeping around. Even his own friends, he has impregnated some of them. He doesn't use condom. He, he uses everything wrong. He, he, he has impregnated so many women. And now the child, the child support people want him. He has run to Ghana. He doesn't want to come back here because he has so many kids that you know, mm. I mean, if they were to take his, uh, if we were to support them, he won't have a dime. So he has run away. Oh. They say one woman cursed him in Germany when before he came to the US. He, he, he cheated on his girlfriend, a girlfriend. I, I don't know whether she's an agent or a demon or a witch, and said, You will sleep with every woman you see. You will never prosper. <laughs> and, and that oh. curse has. That case has followed a man. He sleeps with every woman. If he comes close to your wife, you have to you have to be weary. Don't let him, because I don't know whether he has a, a something. You know, the woman allow him, uh, allow him to uh, sleep with them for some reason, because that case is working. Every woman he approaches, oh, he has presented so many women, and he has run away. Okay, mm -hmm. so yes, I... you can. If your husband confessed that she slept with somebody, uh, then yes, you can say that, no, I want to be sure. But still, it's not foolproof. Because if it's a cheater, after submitting the test, he can still go and, and cheat with another woman and bring disease to you. You just have to pray that it doesn't happen. Amen. Okay, so, amen. So amen. let's ask questions for time's sake. Well, Gaston, one more is uh, Well, <clears throat> I have some scripture here. Uh, we all know that God has given us common sense. He's given us our will. And even if you have a car and you drive it, you have to maintain it. So between a man and a woman, if the woman, uh, the man or vice versa, anyone can be any other. If you don't do certain things, you don't become attractive. Uh, sex does it, Marriage doesn't mean only sex. The, but the, the way we are talking, we are talking about sex is, you know, no matter what the man does, if he wants to have sex, the woman should allow. But let's listen to scriptures, please. The okay. First Corinthians chapter seven. First Corinthians chapter seven. Read, yeah, reading from two coming. Was nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own yes, wife. I have. I have. And let each, please, and let each woman have her own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her. And life was also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but his wife does. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time, 
that you may give yourselves to trusting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of self-control. But I say this as a concession, not as a commandment. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. I have that test here. I wrote it down. I, I think I brushed on it. I would that kind before. Yes, I, I said that. But, I don't but what, does this, what does this explain to us? It explains to us that you, you not that you are married to the woman. You can all treat her or do anything to her or don't make her feel good. And anytime you go and say, hey, I want sex, then she will. She lets you do it. Because sex is not something, you, you have to do something very attract. Something has to attract the woman, even though you are the husband. That doesn't give you the authority. You go get drunk, you go get misbehaved somewhere, they will come and say, I have to do sex with you. No, God has given us some common sense. So let's apply that also to this. Because okay. the way we are saying- yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, Daddy, what about a, a man or woman that likes sex? Both ways, I'm not saying one way. If, 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 a, first, if, if, if a woman that. likes sex, you have to satisfy her as best as you can. Mm -hmm. If a man likes sex, you mm -hmm. have to satisfy him mm -hmm. because you are together. So some and some men different. some men like sex, some women don't. Uh, the whole day, that, 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 if you ask me, there are some men problem. that if you do not give the sex to them, the whole day there is problem for house. So if yes, it's, it's true. It's true, but it should not be so. Prophet, it's, mm -hmm. it should not be. Yeah. So. We are human beings. It you should not be so. My wife or my husband wants sex. So every time I'm going on doing, you will die. So please, let's be about it. No, you don't die. You don't if, die. If the woman, if the man go outside, maybe you did not give it. If the man go outside to go and carry sickness and bring it for you, you like it that way? Me? Oh, the way you're asking me? Uh -huh. You're asking me that question? No, 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 no. But, but you as a man, <laughs> you want to tell me that every day, every morning, afternoon, if you want to sleep with your wife? No, you cannot. There's you don't have man, the energy. There's for that. Are doing, but you know, nobody, there's nobody can do that. You know, nobody does that. Man. I've so, just said so. it. No, Daddy, uh, there is a man that I hear for FM, a wife that bring him, is complaining that three times a day <laughs> or four times a day, the man will be asking. Oh, okay. so, Right. Uh, if you get maybe every day, once a day, once a day, once a day, it's still okay. Well, mm. then the man also should do some things very good to attract the woman. Because some men, you know, they, the way they even talk to their wives, mm -hmm. some of them even slap them. If you do these things, your wife cannot sleep with you. So let's all let's be practical. We are human beings. Don't, don't let us well, yes. Over. yes, you have a message. You have a message. That's why. That's why he said here that, you know, I should have read it, but I didn't. That is the first point you said. So, Jama, I would need you, you know, not the day we're meeting and we're doing it from any firm. Okay. Okay. It's good. It's good. It's good. You have also contributed your points. Yes, the woman yeah, has to keep her, her body in top shape. The man also must treat the woman in a loving way so that mm -hmm. the woman will feel like always doing it because... For sex mm -hmm. to a woman is purely emotion. For a guy, it's pure pleasure. So the, there are differences. Almost it a bit air, yeah. And in the, there are some women that they say it's painful. There are some person that say it's not painful. So because of the pain that is too much, or because no, 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 no. There's something like pain. If you if you take time, if you take time, oh, and she's well lubricated. The one top was why it was one up for a very okay. Told you, I told what I ran with me to jail with me cost of a jail. Ah, Jesus, with me cost of a toy. And your one with me cotton, send your bear. Sadena or barney to me, I would me to jail, send a bear with the bayer, mom, and send a bear, be cock for a mouth. Oh, they say coconut oil is better than ordinary jail. Uh, okay, ah, Pastor, how do hey. you know? So then after today. <laughs> okay, let's let's continue. We we'll, we we'll, we'll leave this segment aside and continue, and maybe we'll bring it back. 
then my question to you is why is marriage so important? Hello? Yeah. Uh, why is marriage so important? Be, be, the marriage important is God has instituted it. Yes. Okay. That's good. Another one. Another one. Can somebody contribute? Why is marriage so important? Don't you know? I don't know. I worry. Everyone for so. Because of holiness. Holiness. I said, I don't know about when I said, I was like, oh, Christo Suma, oh, my God, my MA female. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. But some people, they still marry and they still cheat on their wife. So, yes, we, we, we will take that. But uh, let's, okay. Another one. Marriage is important to strengthen one another. Marriage is important to? To strengthen one another. One another. Yeah, to help each other, yes. To, yes. have, to respect one another. Uh, so, to, to strengthen. You, when you are tired, your, your, your husband can tell you, don't be tired. We give you up. We give you strength to move forward, to do you what are, you Yes, do. I understand. I know what you are talking about. Huh? It's, it's, it's to help each other. Strength yes. is someone go, if someone is down or your wife is going through difficulties, you can encourage her, you can yes. advise her. If she loses a job or falls on hard time, you, the man, will step in and say that I'm going to do my part to support. Just like if a husband is not working, the woman will work and support the husband. And so it is, it is give and take affair. You know? And so why? If, so uh, Paul, Paul, has, has a, Paul, Paul says. Uh, ask the questions. Anyone has something else to contribute? I, just conti I want to contribute to what the question we just asked. Now, Paul says, now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife. Yeah. Okay. So that is that is just about what prophet said. That holiness, for you have to be holy so that you, you so the benefit, one of the importance of marriage is that. You don't have to go outside that marriage, mm -hmm. marital home to sleep with another mm -hmm. woman or man. You see? So those are the benefits. God, God knows that some people burn with sexual desire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for that, for say, for that matter, you have to have your own wife and, and then mm -hmm. satisfy her so you don't go out sleeping all over the place so one of the benefits one of it, it, those are some of the importance uh, i'm talking about importance here we'll go to the benefit the important the important is that uh god wants us to what be faithful to each other and so that we will not go sleeping yes. around because god hates fornication he hates adultery too adultery is married couples moving around, uh, cheating on each other. Fornication is somebody who is not married and having sex. God hates that. That's why it's so important for you to have your own wife so that you'll be faithful to her and she is faithful to you so that you will have, you will have that woman alone for yourself and she has you for herself. You have that woman for yourself and she will have you for herself. Okay, so that's why marriage is very important. Our time is going very quickly. Let us ask this question too. What are some of the benefits of marriage? What we derive from marriage? The, get the help. Best. But, uh, uh, praise God. And what do you get? What do you get from it? Uh, benefit of marriage, uh, two couples, they, uh, they have to plan together, give, uh, give each other idea, Plans life together, future together. See the way we want things to be to be for us. See the way we want us to train our children. So couples supposed to help each other. It's not only by money, by advice, support, encourage your husband. Anything that your husband is doing, like you support, encourage and empower him. 
So also with my you suppose encourage your wife and see her power at that. See what you're supposed to do, see what you're not supposed to do. You don't say maybe your husband fail one time or he fails two times that you will say all hope are gone. All hope is not gone. Give her advice, encourage him, tell him what will make you get up again and uh, continue the journey. So yes, okay, that is good. Somebody mm. can also, there are a lot of things to think. The best that you do, right? We talked about okay. importance. Yeah, we finished the importance, we now go to importance. One of the importance, uh, let me retract, is that it's an institution God has ordained. And that's why it's so important. God has ordained that you marry. Everything God has done for us is important because he knows the best. Now we're going to the benefit. Our dear mom, um, um, uh, first lady, she said that, uh, the benefit are uh, helping each other, supporting each other, yes. And what else? Also to plan together about your financial situation and also praying together with your children. Okay, that's good. What else? Sister Doris. Doris, yes, you can say something. Thank you, sir. Um, to be fruitful, I used to multiply you know, have to learn, have good things. I don't know. That is what I think is important <clears throat> that you have to learn. Your generation will not lost. <laughs> Amen. I mean, uh, I didn't, I didn't get that very well. Oh. <laughs> Marriage, why it is important? For example, now. Somebody no, got no, no. to this one. No, no, no. We have moved from the importance to the benefit. Importance okay. is why marriage is very important. Now, what you derive from marriage, what do you get from marriage is what we are we are now now. The right of marriage is to be fruitful. Amen. Be, be fruitful. Yes, sir. Yes, that's very yes. That's very, very good. Yes. Uh, one of and what the, else? One of the benefits is the Lord said, man, you don't know that because of you, your wife can pass you through heaven. Or woman, you don't know that because of your... That even, but so what did I make sure I say? Yeah, I understand. I know. That's also very, very good. Uh, yeah, just like process. He said, man or woman, you, you may not know that maybe because of your wife, you have salvation. So, so the benefit is that if you marry uh, an unbeliever, mm -hmm. because you are a believer, that unbeliever could be saved. Amen. You see? So that's, those are the two most important is uh, for the fruitfulness. The benefit is the fruitfulness you get the children that you get from marriage. And then second is salvation. Like you, you, you may lead your husband to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's wonderful. Now, uh, we can add other, other things. Can somebody also suggest something? Uh, in, in, in marriage, uh, you can uh, you can ignore ignore some kind of things. Maybe your your husband or your wife is doing to you. That one can still be the marriage. You can endurance. You can be a endure. Maybe your husband, uh, your husband can be doing things that you don't want or you don't like, or your wife will do things that you don't want or you don't like. You can be a endure, be putting his prayer to God to it away. Yeah, well, those are the, yeah some benefit a little bit. You know, you can if if you have issues like difficulties. You, you can take it to the Lord in prayer. The benefit, we know that the importance we say is uh, to have your own husband. The benefit also sex. Sex is a benefit you get from marriage, don't? Is that not so? Yes. Yeah, it's a benefit. Because if you are not married, you cannot have sex. According mm. to according to God's destiny, uh, so, so the only benefit you can get is, is sex. Yes, 
Yes. Uh huh. Which means with difference. Yeah. If you don't sleep with your wife, there will be this. There will be challenges. So the benefit, the enjoyment you get from the marriage is also sex and children, and but then but you can hear. Can hear what you are saying. Huh? So Jama, you have question. Hello. Hello, Sujama. Sujaman, are you there? He said he can hear. It's now okay. It's not, it's not okay. Are you? Okay. So 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 those are some of the benefits. And then in Ecclesiastes, to Solomon said that if you fall, the benefit that somebody can help you, right? Yes. Those are the benefits of marriage. If you and your wife and you fall sick, your husband will take care of you. If your husband, you fall sick, like here, a man got stroke, the wife took care of him, protected him, supported him, and it, until the man died. And that man, too, they cut off his, his leg, the wife now working, going and coming. Those are the benefits of marriage, right? Yes. Yes. Because if you're alone and you, you, you they cut off your hand, who will step in? In, a, in, in America or Europe? Who, who, if you don't have sister or brother, your friends might do, but it won't be like a wife who will rent a place for you and support you. So those are the benefits, the support you get when you fall down. And then the advice, the advice you will get when you, when you face a hard time, somebody will stand behind you. Daddy, what, what about misunderstanding? There's some people- We are going there, we are going there. We are not, let me go. no, 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 no. No, we are not there yet. Okay. Uh, Please, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, according to the question that you answered, marriage is uh, the pop. The benefit is to marry. If you don't marry, you cannot have sex. What about the women? Somebody like me. I have uh, children, but I'm not yet married. I did not marry. I have sex. What is what is it? What is it going to happen to me? What will happen to me? But you know that if you didn't marry and you have sex, that is fornication. You know that, right? But you, you call the person your husband, you have not paid bright price. You have one children, two or two, three, four, five. No bright price. What will happen to such a person? Hmm. Such a person is not living in the will of God. You see, you are not in the will of God. You need to ask for forgiveness. If you have children outside marriage, many women today, they do that, but they are not in the will of God. It's not how God has ordained it for you. So sex should only be in the confines of the, of, of, uh, uh, the marital bed. So it's the confines mm -hmm. of the uh, ma marriage is where sex mm -hmm. must occur. So if you have sex outside marriage with anyone and have children, they are illegit illegitimate. And it's not the will of God for your life. So we're looking at, like I said, the benefits, like we said, when you fall, your husband will step in to support you. You have somebody that you can discuss your issues with. You have somebody that can help you with difficulties and give you advice. Someone that can provide sex and then you can have children, you can have salvation. All these are benefits. And you can have advice if you if you are doing something wrong or you're, you you going out and something wrong. The one say, "Oh no, do this way, do it that way," and somebody who can direct your party. So all those things are benefit that it can that can or could be derived from marriage. Now let's go to the last question. Uh, what are some of the challenges in marriage? Mm. At a team degree, there are thousands of challenges in marriage. So everybody is expected to say something. But this question, everyone on this platform, what are some of the challenges that one can face in marriage? Uh, one thing, or the challenges in, man in marriage is financial. Problems. Yes, financial, yes. Oh. Another one, uh, who else? Madam, mm -hmm. Madam we also, with the, with the one, yes, with a blue shirt under. Mommy who opened the oh, my, the woman who does the open prayer. I don't. I, Mama Gloria. The open prayer. Mama Gloria. Mama, Mama Gloria. Gloria. Yes. You, yeah. I, yes. What are some of the challenges in marriage? 
Oh, such a bene wa wore mu ati ti bene abi tu afa mu wore mu. Emotional challenges. What what kind of emotional challenges? Okay, what kind of emotional challenges? Um, huh? Um, well, I can I can give you an example. Something yes. that happened to me, I was a witness years ago. There was this lady who rented a room in our house in London, and. <laughs> Uh, you see them every evening, they will be fighting. <laughs> so, so my husband intervened and then the lady said to my husband that time, uh, the husband, uh, he told the husband that anytime he goes out to sleep with a prostitute, like he pays money. So if he wants to have sex with her, he has to pay 20 pounds. And he has to pay, he has to give, uh, put the money down before he oh, would oh, allow oh, to have sex with her. So and the woman told your like, husband that. The woman, uh, the, the, yeah, woman told, the woman, the woman told your husband that every time that, he goes out that, to have that, sex with about her. his husband, not his. Oh, husband. the woman told us. Uh, woman's husband. Oh, oh, the woman's husband. What? Oh, okay, I see. Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Said that the reason why they've been fighting in the island in the evening was that um, he he knows that if the husband goes out to sleep with people, that he has to. Pay. So in effect, <laughs> if he wants to have sex with her, he has to put twenty pounds down every evening. Otherwise, he will not allow him to have sex with her. And it was, <laughs> Yeah, so those are some of them. We try to talk them through. And her reason for doing that is that the husband is cheating on her. Is that right? Well, she 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 thought that was what she thought that he goes out there to have sex and pay. So if he wants to have sex with her, she would have to pay (laughs) twenty pounds every evening. If <laughs> Uh, I, see. I see. So, Bibi, uh, there, there, years ago. <laughs> there, there is a reason for everything. Somebody, somebody who do something you don't understand, you just criticize them. Well, <laughs> she knows why she's doing that. Okay. Well, I, I never understood it. So today, I don't. Even okay. Understand. Now, some of the challenges. Madam Edna, God bless you. Now, mommy, uh, oh, you said the first one. Now, mommy, uh, I want to say something. So, Jama, yes. Uh, Prophet, if I look at it, I think my man is going to be a man. I'm 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 going be money or bad or be mano be a first ten minutes cry is okay for for the man but obano a bia no one who achieved the best chance on one son in the man is also be only some what you know but be ma i just so i five minutes ten minutes is okay but so bad no no so Jaman, Hallelujah. 
Ahamaha. Yeah, okay, madam. Yeah. Another challenge is, is to know the platform that your husband places also uh, so that you are teamed together in a marriage. So you have to know the problem and also at the same time cover your husband in so many situations. His weak points shouldn't come out. So these are one of the challenges. Amen. Okay. Amen. Yeah, for time's sake, our time is almost gone. So we will entertain one question, and after that, we just want to say one or two, three prayers before we leave. And so, uh, one more, one more uh, answer. If you any one more, uh, this one. Can I answer? Yes. Uh, the most uh, challenges in marriage is misunderstanding and lack of love. Yes, okay. If there is love in marriage, you will overlook everything. There will be no problem. Yes, that's very, very, very good. I like that. There are so many challenges in marriage, my precious ones, on this platform. It could be, it could be misunderstanding. It could be lack of communication. It could be unfaithfulness. It could be financial issues. It could be greediness. The, the woman or the man want it for himself. You know, it's all about him. Satisfy me. If I get money, I will send it to my family or do things, but, you know, I won't spend it on you or, you know. So, and also sometimes, yes, it's part of the package too. And then sometimes, like you understand, she said, you don't agree. And then your sometimes your husband won't listen to anything you say. And then sometimes your wife too does not listen to you. Mm. These are our challenges. Sometimes you have different opinions on issues, like you want to take your wife to church, she doesn't want to go. You want her to pray, she doesn't want to pray. You say, let's fast, she doesn't say, oh no. The last time I fasted, I fasted, I gained weight. I won't do it again. It's just so a lot of issues like miscommunication. That is key. And then unfaithfulness, the man is not faithful. And then financial issues, those are challenges. And then how do you forgive and forget? How do you love? How do you begin again? How do you, how do you uh, pretend as if nothing is happening, even though you are hurting somewhere? Even though things are not going the way you want it. These are all challenges that can come in marriages. But like I said, there will always be issues in marriage. But some are bigger than others. Some are more serious uh, than others. Uh, but uh, it... yes. But if you if you work it out, it uh, will be well. And it's, I, it's, the, I, I, it's the most important institution in the world. So we're gonna. Uh, there's one thing that I want to. Uh, there's one thing that I want to add. You know. Okay, we, with the men at time, we we'll go pray. out. We see, uh, with the men at time, we go out. We see some nice things that maybe you want to buy. Then you get to the house and they say, "Oh, you didn't buy what I like, and this thing they don't like, and this thing they." You see, it will make you like when you go out and you see something that is nice, you, you can't buy it for her. Because when you buy it for her, he doesn't even, even yes. appreciate what you have done. Yes, it's that true. It too is, is something. Yes, yeah. those those are all the challenges. Yeah, yeah. You misunderstanding and things like you buy a nice perfume, you think it's so expensive and so nice, and you come and she doesn't even appreciate it. You know, you she doesn't appreciate it, so you say forget it. Next time I won't do it again. And then unforgiveness. Yeah. Those are unforgiveness. Some women you do something, but they will never forgive you. It, they will it, it will even go it take you to bed. When you tell them, leave me. You said this, you said this, you don't care about me, you forget about my birthday, you didn't come to you see, those are all issues and challenges. They don't forgive, they keep grudges. My husband has done this, so I'm also doing this. It doesn't help. You need mm -hmm. to forgive. It's very, very important. The way the Lord God forgives us. When you love someone, you don't count the cost, you don't count the headache, and you don't count the sacrifice. 
wives. So let, let that be your motto. That I'm going to love my wife or husband no matter what. I will always learn to forgive. The Bible says I should forgive. If I don't, the Lord will not forgive me. Many people, their heavens are closed because of marriage. They don't forgive their husbands. Yeah, I, I'm going to tell this story. And then after that, we'll, we'll stand, maybe pray two or three prayer points and we'll leave. There was this, there was this woman uh, who lives uh, staying here with her husband. And then she had a baby. And the husband found out that this baby is not mine. Because looking at the two other children, he could deduce, he could tell that, nah, this baby is different. So he, he quietly took, he quietly took the baby's saliva to his doctor and said, doctor, test this for me. They tested it. It was not his baby. So he called his wife. He said, what? Well, this baby is not mine. Then the woman, the woman fell down and, and asked for forgiveness. That when we were angry, when like two weeks, you know, two weeks that you were angry with me and we didn't talk. I went out, out of anger. I met this guy and we had one night stand. Oh. And, and, and the man forgave his wife. It's, it's so godly, you know. Many men will, many men will go ballistic. It's a white guy. If it's a black man, he will want to cut his wife. <laughs> what funny yeah, thing. But then the one thing is, if the woman don't know the woman, man, just once they do it, the man go, we don't know the woman, you can take the baby. But if the woman know the woman back, you will still know him back. That one is the problem. Oh, okay, I see. This but one, if he, yeah, this the, one. If you do it once, that the baby enter that, the man go, you don't know the man again. That one, you can uh. take the baby. That one, no problem. But if you know the woman later, if you still know the man, that one is still problem. The thing is, the thing is, the man, the man just walk away. So now the man has the baby, and the baby knows that the man is his father. He doesn't even know because it's, they, they're keeping it a secret because they agreed, the woman begged that I will never ever do that again. And the man had forgiven her, his wife. And I love that. And there was a story to this guy. He this stayed here for, He stayed here for uh, almost, almost 15 years. And he was referred for his two, three kids in Ghana. And then they said, we have approved a visa, but bring DNA so that we can give them. Visa. The DNA came and all three, they were not his children. So when he was in Ghana, it, the woman confessed that his her former boyfriend, uh, when when he goes away to work, then the former boyfriend will come and sleep with her. So all three children were fathered by the former boyfriend. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and, and the man, the man has the man has taken care of this case. Even the last one is in university. So the case. He told the kids, the kids said, as far as we are concerned, you are our father. We don't know that man. We'll never go to him. So that is the story. And that man too, the man, the man told his wife that if you have done this to me, I can never stay with you again. As for this, I, I can never stay with you. If you have gone behind all three back in for seven years that we stayed together this this former boyfriend was sleeping with you all the time hmm. and he fathered these children and i was the one taking care of them so all this unfaithfulness these are things that could be troublesome in marriage if you would love your wife and you find out that she has done this to you what do you do okay it's an unpardonable you you, you can't wrap your head around it it's not even one, three, all three. Hmm. It's difficult to forgive her. Hmm. So it's not, it's not, you know, uh, why he pays, why he pays the bill and support the uh, uh, rented a place for the woman. This guy will just come and sleep with her at night and, and run away. Oh, Jesus. Well, anytime the man travels for work, this guy is there. He will be sleeping with his wife when, he's, when the man is going to return then the man will just leave, you know? So these are some of the challenges, but I pray that none of you go through. And if you even have to go through that, the Lord will give you the grace. So this ends our discussion. We're gonna stand up and pray.
that father, the spirit of faithfulness and gentleness, put that spirit upon you. We want to be faithful to you, not only to our spouses, but to you, Almighty. That is, in terms of living holy for you, avoid every appearance of sin. And every word you say, everything we do, let us ask if it is pleasing in your sight. And give us the grace to forgive our husbands, no matter what they have done to us. The grace to forgive our wives, no matter what. For Father, you said, if we do not forgive, you will not forgive us either. Let us take that prayer to the Lord that we will forgive and be faithful to our spouses as we are faithful to him, almighty God. Even God, God case is even more serious. We need to be faithful to God, even more than our spouses. Of course, our spouses, we need to be faithful to them too. But God, because he's the one who's going to judge, and he's the control of all them. And if you are faithful to God, you will be faithful to your, for your, your spouse. And if you are faithful to your spouse, you will definitely be faithful to God. Let us pray. Father God, ask for the spirit of faithfulness. The spirit of faithfulness. Father, the spirit of faithfulness. Without your help, we can do nothing. Mighty God, we need your help, oh Lord, to strengthen us as we have talked about marriages and the issues that confront marriages. We pray that, Father, you have the spirit of faithfulness to be faithful to us, Father, and faithful, most important, to you, Almighty God. In the name of Jesus, Father, let us forgive. The way you forgive us, for you said if we do not forgive, you would never, never forgive. So by refusing to forgive our husband, we will end up in hellfire because we refuse to forgive, forgive our children, our husband. We will hold the bodies of them. Father, forgive us that we will never in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. No, 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 no. And give us the grace to forgive all oh, yes. Forgive our spouses, oh my God. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, the grace of you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, let us forgive you. In the mighty name of Jesus we lose that spirit of all our souls. We lose that spirit of all our souls. In marriage, let us forgive In marriage, let us forgive you. to our spouse and to love them the way they love us. In the mighty name and to love them the way you love them. Thank you, pray God of heaven. Thank you for your Thank you, pray God of heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus, Almighty God, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, pray God of heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are praying for marriage. We are going to pray for marriages, all marriages. Those who are single, to pray for them. Let there be peace and tranquility in marriage. Let there be oneness. Let the human find us together. Of course, of love, I can never, never forget in the name of Jesus. And whatever issues, whatever troubles, may Jehovah come into that situation for us. In the name of Jesus, pray for all couples. Not only those of this platform, all marriages come against the spirit of divorce. God is up in us. It shall not be our person. The mighty name of Jesus. Let the Bible say to you, the warrior of the world, let the Bible say to you, 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 
Our time is fast, cause but we have three prayer points. Very, very quickly, two, two minutes, we're going to pray. First of all, I want you to take your request to the Lord in prayer. Whatever is your heart desire, take it to him. Where two or three have gathered, the Lord is in our midst. Whatever concerns you, whether it's marriage, whether it's other issues, let's pray and take it to the Lord. After that, we'll pray prayer of intercession and thanksgiving and we'll leave. So let's pray. Pray, pray that the Lord. Yes. Thank you. 
Now you pray, pray out intercessory. This is a serious prayer. Pray for families, pray for couples, pray for children, pray for all nations, all people, pray for other prayers, other prayer uh, ministry uh, on at different Zooms. Lift them up out to the Lord in prayer. We're praying for Ghana, let there be peace, Nigeria, all nations. Lift them up and pray this quick prayer of intercession. Even your family members, your enemies, the witches, pray for them. Because the witches, Satan is also using them. Don't think that the witches are free. They are not free. They are under the curse of God, and Satan is using them for evil. And when they don't repent, they will die and go to have fire themselves. So they are not free. Those who the, uh, Satan is empowering, and he is using them to destroy. Pray, pray for them. That the Lord will have mercy, they will repent and come to God. Lord, in your mouth, for family, pray for children, pray for husbands, pray for this people. That the Lord will make a way, the Lord will turn things around in the name of God. In the name of Jesus. I'm <laughs> 
for his mercies and his ministration and the things that he has taught to us, we will learn from it and it shall be permanent. Lift up the prophet, pray for me, pray for all on Sunday. Let's pray for each other, pray for ourselves and lift up this platform to the Lord in prayer that his power will rest upon us and that deliverance will manifest, testimonies will abound and many will run and come to this prayer and to lift up the name of Jesus and his glory shall be seen. And then after I give thanks, give thanks. Let's go in the name of Jesus. My precious ones, Lord, 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 Lord,